In this session, we're going to be looking at process costing. Now, in the previous sessions, we looked at job costing. So, costing in an environment where all, each product we produce for a customer is different in some way. And we were able to build up the costs associated with producing that unique product for each customer. Process costing we use in an environment where there is a continuous production process in place and where all of the units we produce are identical. So, for example, oil refinery would be a process costing environment. At the very start of the process, we input our raw materials, so our crude oil. That material will go through a number of different processes until the very end when it becomes our output, so our petrol, our diesel, our heavy fuel oil, and so on. So in a process costing environment, we have a situation where our raw materials will be input into process one, And in process one, we will incur some additional costs. So we will have labor costs and some overhead cost associated with running that process. Once our units have gone through process one, they will be sent over to our next process, process two. In process two, we're going to incur some additional costs again. So some further labor and overhead costs. Assuming this particular company, company only has those two processes, then at the end, we have our output. Now the real problem in this kind of continuous production environment where our materials go through a number of different processes is that we cannot separately identify our cost unit at each point in the production process. We can only identify our individual cost units at the very end of the last process. So, when our materials are in process one then, for example, how do we calculate the cost per unit? And this is what our process costing system does for us. It gives us a way of calculating what our cost per unit is at each point in the production process. Now we are going to see some complications that are very specific to this process costing environment. But no matter what complications we see, just remember what we are trying to do is always to calculate the cost per unit. But before we get into those complications, first we want to see and understand what process accounts look like. So we're going to go through an exercise um, that shows us how we process our information then in our process accounts. So, we have some information then for a company, and um, so this manufacturing company has two different processes, cutting and forming. And we are told for each process, the materials which are input to each process, and the value of those materials. And then we have our direct labour and our production overhead costs for each of the two processes as well. And all we are going to do is write up the process accounts. Now, where we have an environment like this with two processes, remember, what happens is then, our raw materials are input to our first process, the cutting process. During the cutting process, we incur some labour and overhead costs. And then when our units are complete in the cutting department, they are sent over to the forming process, where some additional materials are added and we incur further labour and overhead costs. Now our process accounts are just simple T accounts um, which we use to keep track of all of the costs incurred within each process. So, 
looking at our Process 1 account, which is our cutting department. Now, process accounts are somewhat different to other T accounts you will have seen. Um, we record an additional piece of information in process accounts. So as well as recording the monetary value, we also record the units. So for our cutting process then, we were told the first thing we do is input a million units of material. And the material cost is £500,000. In a process account, we build up our costs on the debit side. So the debit side will show our inputs to the process. On the credit side, we show our outputs from the process. So our first input to the process then is our materials, which is a million units, and the monetary value was £500,000. What did we have next? Well, we're told in the question, in the cutting process, our labour costs are 200000 and our production overheads were also 200,000. So they will be our next two inputs to the process. Labor and overheads. Now, labor and overheads will never have any unit values attached to them. So we don't have units of labor or units of overhead. We will only have units in relation to our materials inputs and outputs. So they are all our inputs to the process. After we've done all this work on these, these units of material, what happens? Well, we said that they will then be output to forming. So we are outputting the million units and the value of those million units is the total amount we have spent on those units so far. So if we add up our input costs, we'll get 900,000. So that is the value of our output. In our process account, both our unit values and our monetary values must balance. And that's our process account complete for the cutting process. Now this company is a second process, the forming process. So we just need to do the same for forming record the inputs into the forming process on the debit side and record the outputs from the forming process on the credit side. And again, we'll record our unit amounts and our monetary values. Now our first input to the forming process is going to be the units we have just sent over from the cutting process. So these million units with a value of 900,000 will be our first input into the next process, into our forming process. So we'll record that then. Our first input is our output from cutting. a million units with a value of 900,000. And then what else did we do within the forming process? If we have a quick look back up to our question, we can see that in the forming process we have added in an additional 500,000 units 
of material. So this will be our next input to the process. And the value of the material is 300,000. So we'll record the additional materials we've added in and then we'll add the labour and the overhead costs for our forming process. So our material additions, 500,000 units with a cost of 300,000. Our labour, we know, has no unitary value attached to it. And the cost was 150,000. Likewise for our overheads. So if we do a quick check on our debit side then to see all of our inputs. At this point now the company is input one and a half million units in total. And the total costs incurred for both the cutting and the forming process are also one and a half million. So finally then, finishing up looking at our credit side, our outputs from the forming department. This will be our output to finished goods. Once the units have gone through the forming process, they are complete and ready to be sold. So in total then, we have one and a half million units with a total value of one and a half million pounds. So our units and our monetary value columns balance. And they are our simple process accounts. Um, just one little question before we move on to the next section. If we were to ask ourselves at this point, what is the cost per unit of each of our one and a half million units? So how much has it cost the company to produce these 1.5 million units? A very straightforward answer would appear to be our cost per unit is the total cost of producing all those units divided by the number of units we have produced. So our cost per unit then is one pound. So all we are doing is spreading our total costs evenly across all the units we have produced.